Welcome, everyone, to the third Thursday meetup of the West Orlando WordPress meetup group. I'm Rob Watson, a co-organizer and host. Uh, West Orlando WordPress is an official WordPress meetup group and is affiliated with the main WordPress Orlando and Word WordCamp US meetup groups. Tonight's presentation is how to increase e-commerce conversions. Do you want shoppers or do you want buyers? An e-commerce store is only as valuable as the number of visitors it converts to buyers. But Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is a successful online store. Building a sustainable, cash-positive storefront takes time and a thoughtful strategy. We'll go over some of the simple tips that you can use to increase engagement, lower customer acquisition costs, and ultimately improve store sales. Our presenter tonight is Topher DeRosia. He is the senior WordPress architect at Camber Creative. Topher brings more than 25 years of experience as a web developer, over a decade of which has been spent building out WordPress sites. In addition, Topher curates HeroPress.com. Fun fact, Topher is responsible for making the official International Space Station Windows 95 desktop theme. He currently lives in Grand Rapids, Michigan with his wife, Kate, and two daughters, Emma and Sophia. You can find Topher on Twitter at Topher1Kenobi, talking about e-commerce, web development, general technology, and culture. He's also a regular on the Make WordPress and Post Status Slack channels. During the talk in the chat window and afterwards when the recording is posted on the westorlandowp.org website, we will provide you with a link where you can obtain a handy checklist that you can use for all your WordPress projects. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to mute their microphones for the presentation. And Topher, thank you for being our presenter this evening. The time is now yours. All righty, thank you very much. All right, how to increase e-commerce conversions. As mentioned, I am Topher DeRosia. Um, it says Senior Developer Advocate at Big Commerce. That was my previous job. I'm still the uh, community ambassador for Big Commerce. And uh, I tweet a lot about Big Commerce WordPress at BC for WP, the hashtag there. Um, so check that out if you're interested in more about Big Commerce for WordPress. Um, I have been doing web stuff for 25 years. We had a great conversation about that before the recording started. Um, I've been around the block a few times. 10 years of WordPress development. Uh, I remember when I started thinking, you know, people were saying, oh, I've been doing this for eight years. I'm thinking, wow, that's a really long time. Well, now they've been doing it 18, so joke's on them. <laughs> Our agenda this evening, we're going to talk about e-commerce conversion rates. Uh, how you, what is a what is a conversion rate and how do you calculate it? And then how to monitor your conversion rates to make sure they're going in the direction you want them to be going. We'll talk about how to increase conversions. And then at the end, we'll do some Q&A. We should have plenty of time for that. So e-commerce conversion rates. First of all, what is an e-commerce conversion? Um, typically, people just say right away, it's a sale. But the fact of the matter is a conversion is any goal you set and uh, you get to set, it's infinite. You can set any goal. So it could be uh, an online sale, a user adding a product to the cart, item to the wish list, email signups, social media shares, or any KPI your company finds valuable. <coughs> Excuse me. So you need to decide what's important to you to know. Um, there are rarely, very rarely, just one conversion you're interested in. Uh, you want to know who's using a variety of different tools on your site. Uh, if you add a new payment gateway, are people using that? All kinds of stuff. Um, so a conversion really is any goal that is accomplished. So the conversion rate is the percentage of website visitors who purchased something from your online store or met any goal in a set period of time, average e-commerce conversion rates are 1% to 2%. Even if you're doing everything right, you can still expect to win the sale around 2% of the time. So a 2% conversion rate for sales should be about the baseline goal for your online store. Um, when I first got into e-commerce, that sounded outrageous to me. I thought, shouldn't everyone who comes into your store buy something? Why are they there if they're not to buy? But apparently 2% is is the way humans buy. 
So you calculate your conversion rate by dividing the number of visitors by the number of conversions to get that percentage. So if your online store is getting 5,000 visitors and 50 conversions for a set period, that means your store's conversion rate is 1%. So if you want to double that to get that 2%, you either double the conversions or you double the visitors or some kind of math in between there. Um, and there's a lot of marketing that goes into figuring out um, what that what that task is between there to get those additional conversions or the visitors. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Tools to monitor conversion rates. There's an old saying, if you're not measuring it, it doesn't matter. So you need to measure. One way you can do it with heat maps. Heat maps are really cool. Um, what we're looking at on the right there is a picture. It's two different heat maps from one product, and that's Hotjar. Um, I'm not affiliated with Hotjar. I just think they're really cool. Um, the right one, where it's mostly red, shows areas where people always look, which is the red, sometimes look, which is the yellow, and rarely look, which is the green. And as you can see on this site, everybody sees the top half. That's because that's what loads. It's called above the fold. And um, a lot of web developers will tell you there is no fold on the web because you can just scroll. But the fact of the matter is many people don't scroll. If it's not on the main screen when it loads, they're not interested. So you need to make sure that the really important stuff is up there in the red where it can be seen. But then even within that, uh, on the left side there, you see in the top left, there is a button that is clicked on so much that I can't even read what it is. I don't know what that button is. Maybe it's a buy or a search or something like that. Um, but whatever it is, it's the most important thing on this page. And so they need to be very careful with that. They want to guide people there. They don't want to hide it. They don't want to make it less attractive. They want to make it only more attractive. Uh, so heat maps can show you what people are looking at and then help you decide to move important things like that buy button into the hot zone. So maybe you have a second button that you want people to see. You just place it right next to that really important one. And they may not click it nearly as much because it's not the thing they're looking for, but they're going to see it and it will absolutely get more traffic. So track what they're doing. Track what they're doing on your website and, and use that to your advantage. Next, find out who your customers are. Quantcast Measure can figure out a disturbing amount of information about your visitors, how old people are, how much money they make, how much education they have, their ethnicity, their gender, all that stuff. And you can use that to change your own behavior or to try to change their behavior for example if you have a stuff for babies then and in your primary uh traffic people buying are old people then you can sort of infer that it's grandparents buying for grandbabies well what are you going to do if you want parents buying well you have to figure that out um and try to get that that age range down into the middle as well, because you don't want the grandparents to stop buying. Um, and then what do you do if if you you are selling something that doesn't seem to appeal at all to your crowd, to the people coming? Well, maybe you should get something that appeals to the people who are showing up or um, contact the people who you want to be selling to and, and try to get them to come to your store. Um, knowing who your customers are and what they're interested in is a huge advantage. And you need to find some parity there. Find out where they're going. Google Analytics is the old favorite here. You can find out where they're from, how they found your site, if they're returning or new, what browser and operating system they've used, whether they're mobile or not, whether they've converted in the past or not, how long they stay on your site. All that stuff is in Google Analytics. And it's super, super valuable. And some of it was surprising to me, uh, particularly the browser and operating system. Um, for a long time, I didn't care. Uh, you can use any browser you want. And I just assumed that uh, people were all using the most popular browser in the world. For a while, it was uh, Internet Explorer. Then for a long time, it was Firefox. And then for a long time, it was Chrome. I just assumed everybody used that. Well, recently, I had a, a woman who was going to take her store live. and 
uh, it wasn't working on Safari. And she didn't want to go live until her store was working on Safari. And I thought, well, that's odd. Why why drag your feet over a, in my opinion, fringe browser like Safari? Well, we looked at her traffic, which she had wisely been doing, and saw that 45% of her sales in the past, historically, were on Safari. And so if she'd gone live with her new store without Safari, she would have immediately lost half her sales, which is unacceptable. And that blew my mind. How is it that so many people are using Safari? And so then I looked and saw that it's all mobile Safari. It was all iPhone users, which then immediately makes tons of sense. Um, iPhones are tremendously popular, and most people using them use Safari. Which then led me to my next surprise. 45% of her sales were on mobile Safari. And so the rest of her mobile sales were on whatever, Chrome on Android or, or whatever. But more than half of her sales were mobile. Um, which then, of course, forces you to shift your thinking again. Well, maybe my website should be a whole lot more mobile friendly. Um, so the moral of the story is look at your Google Analytics and figure out what they're using, who they are, all that stuff. It's really valuable information. Find out what your users want, what your customers want. I'm going to talk here about the statistics that are built into your e-commerce platform. Um, every e-commerce platform has built-in statistics. Woo, Big Commerce, Shopify, they all have it. Um, and they can, they can know things that external stats can't know because they can know things like what's getting processed on the back end after the sale theoretically has gone through. Um, so you can learn a lot. You can learn what people buy most, what they what people buy least, what gets returned most, and what people search for. So if you're selling a product and people are searching for a different one, then maybe you should either get that product that they're searching for and offer it to them or market better so that they start searching for your product. Um, if you have a product that gets returned often, try and figure out why. Is it poorly made and, and breaks a lot and you need to stop selling it? Or is it just poorly described on the website so people don't understand what they're buying. If you can change a paragraph to, to fix uh, a big return problem, then that's a really big win. Um, so look at what your customers want in your internal stats. So how to take action. What are you going to do with all this knowledge? First of all, offer free shipping. I can't, I can't, Emphasize enough um, what a difference this will make to offer free shipping. Amazon does it. Everyone expects it. And we all know somebody, or at least at least the urban legend of somebody who will drive all the way across town to save two cents in gas. Um, people will shop elsewhere if you don't offer free shipping. And you may wonder, well, how can I afford to pay all that shipping? Well, you do the same thing Amazon did. You raise your prices. Um, that's just the way it works. You raise the price to cover the shipping, and then you offer free shipping. People feel like they're getting a deal, and that's more important to them than actually getting a deal. Um, and there's a ton of psychology in that. It's true. People are more concerned about feeling like they get a deal than actually getting a deal. So I'm just going to say flat out, just offer free shipping. It's worth it. Provide limited time coupon codes. And there are two important things in that one line. Coupon codes are important. Again, people feel like they're getting a deal. Um, they feel special. You, especially if you, you make the coupon special and say, hey, you're getting this coupon only because you're special in some way. It's your birthday month or um, you have purchased over $100 in the past or whatever. You are special, so we're giving you a coupon. People love that. But the second part is just as important, perhaps more important, and that's limited time. You send somebody a coupon and it sits in their email, they think, oh, that's cool. And after a couple of days, it has scrolled off the main, main screen of their inbox. It might as well be gone forever. They're not going to remember. Um, but if you tell them, hey, this is a special coupon just for you, and it's going to expire in 24 hours or you need to use it before Christmas or Halloween or whatever. 
then immediately it places some scarcity on that and some urgency, and they feel like, oh, I need to use this promptly. Um, your sales will go way up because people feel like they need to use it um, or they're going to lose it, and they don't want to lose it because they feel like they're getting a deal, and that's important. We can test your checkout process. The fewer options available, the higher the conversion rate. Always, if you can remove one step, your conversion rate will go up. Remove another step, it will go up some more. That's just the way it is. The fewer steps there are, the more conversions you get. Uh, it's There's a common idea that you should offer more payment gateways to give people choice uh, so that they can use the gateway they want. People don't care about payment gateways. They say, here's my credit card, process it. Um, the only exception there is PayPal. Uh, so I recommend not more than two, PayPal and something else, anything you want. Might be Stripe, might be Square, might be something custom in your country. Holland has one that everybody uses and nobody uses anything else. So maybe use PayPal on that one if you're selling in Holland. Um, but don't offer them a ton of choices because they get decision paralysis. They don't know. Is one cheaper than the other? Is it better than the other? What should I use? Don't offer them choices. Same with shipping. Um, don't do a whole bunch of shipping options. Do as few as possible. Uh, obviously, you need to cover your customer base and make sure you can ship everywhere you need to, but use the fewest you can. And then, <laughs> excuse me. Lastly, consider skipping the cart and go direct to checkout. This really only works if you have a single product on your entire website. If you're selling one thing, um, you don't need a cart. The purpose of the cart is to give a summary of what's going to be purchased next. And if there's only one thing, there's a great big buy button, and it goes straight to checkout. Um, you can save a, a ton of time there, and people are going to really like it. So skip, skip the cart if you have just one product. Use cart abandonment software. When you're buying something, uh, you almost always have to give your email address because they need to send you a receipt. And once the store has the email address, then they have the ability to send an email if you don't buy and say, hey, I noticed you loaded some stuff in your cart and you did not buy. Would you like to buy? And there are a ton of reasons this could happen. Maybe somebody's got their cart loaded up, they're ready to buy, and the toddler knocks the orange juice over on the keyboard. Um, they jump up, they run away, they they put the laptop upside down on the heater and never come back. Um, these are people who wanted to buy. They were ready. They just need that little reminder. And so cart abandonment software can send them an email that says, hey, I see you loaded up your cart. If you click this link, we will preload your cart again with those products at the price that you got including whatever discounts you had, and you can get right back there and buy again. Um, I used to work for Easy Digital Downloads, and when we enabled cart abandonment software, sales went up by 30%. And it, it was really dramatic. Um, it was great. So how do you get this stuff? Um, pretty much every platform has it somehow. Big Commerce and Shopify have it built in. WooCommerce has an add-on that you can get. It's not very expensive. Um, you can almost always get advanced uh, card abandonment software. Like I said, BigCommerce has it built in, but there are add-ons you can buy also buy, which give you more options, more emails, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so look at your options based on your platform and figure out what's available to you. Uh, but the short answer is use it. Um, it's free on Big Commerce. It's cheap on Woo. There's no reason not to. Just do it. Let your customers check out as guests. This goes back to uh, removing as much as you can from your checkout. Um, you can see in the screenshot there, you just put an email address, and continue as guest. Moving right along. Uh, there are good reasons to make people register and get their get all their information and, and create an account. Um, but you need to really make it worth their while. If you're going to ask them to do that, you need to offer them, you know, deals and coupons and secret information about sales and when new inventory is coming, all that stuff. Um, because 
when you get right down to it, people are in a hurry. They don't want to take the time. And so if you're going to ask them to take the time, you need to make it really worth it. Have a great product return policy. A strong fear shoppers have is that they won't like what they bought and be stuck with it. Now there's now they don't have the money to get what they did need. They have a thing they don't need. Um, it's a fear. And people who are afraid don't buy. So what you want to do is remove the fear. And so there are a number of things that make a return policy great. One is uh, simplicity. Make it really short. This is not a long document. You say, mail it back. We will send you cash. Easy as, easy as pie. Um, very easy to understand. Anyone can understand that. Uh, it's easy to understand for people whose English is not English is not their first language. Um, keep it short. Keep it simple. Um, make it prevalent, easy to find. So put it right on the cart or the checkout page, and make it big. Um, hey, are you worried that you're not going to like this? Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it for you. If you don't like it, send it back. Um, we'll we'll make it we'll make it right for you. Um, so you really want, it's really about removing that fear. Make your add to cart and checkout buttons prevalent. This may seem like a no brainer, but it's very common for web developers to be building a website for so long that they know deep in their heart exactly where those buttons are and how could you possibly miss them? And yet people do. So when you're building your, or before you go live or even after you go live, Find someone who's never used their store before, sit them in front and say, click the checkout button or click the cart button. Show me where it is. It's it's a two second question. You can walk up to somebody at the mall and hold up your phone and say, hey, look, do you see a cart button on the screen? Um, All kinds of stuff like that. Find out if it's easy to find. And if it's not, make it easy to find. If people can't find it. They're going to get frustrated. They might buy, like they may work it out, but they're not going to come back. So make it easy to find that stuff. All right, our summary. Streamline your process. Remove as many obstacles as you can. Make your entire checkout process as easy to use as possible. So those three things right there are about speed and ease. But the last one makes people feel good. Make people feel like they're getting a great deal on your site. They're saving by having no shipping. They're getting a coupon. Um, often those uh, abandoned cart systems will send a coupon along with it that said, hey, you know, maybe you were undecided. Will uh, 10% off change your mind? Um, I do know people who game the system that way and will deliberately put stuff in their cart and walk away because they know that an hour later they're going to get a coupon. Um, so you need to think about that as well. Um, so make people feel special and make it easy to buy and your conversion rate will go up. Most of the ideas in this uh, talk came from this blog post, bigcommerce.com slash blog slash conversion rate optimization. I'll bet I didn't use more than a third of the information on that post. There's a ton of stuff there. So I highly recommend you check it out. Um, and not just that post, but the blog in general. The Big Commerce blog is not about the Big Commerce platform. It is exclusively about e-commerce. And it doesn't matter what platform you're using. It has great advice on how to sell online. And I, if, you, if you're doing that or you're doing it for your customers, I really recommend you check out the blog. Uh, you can email me, Topher at derosia.com, or find me anywhere on the internet at Topher Wood Kenobi. Uh, I'm just generally around for questions about e-commerce and big commerce, so let me know what you need. And that is the end of my presentation. Wow, thank you so much, Topher. This, this is I mean, it was a short presentation, but man, there's so much in there that everybody can use, I'm sure. Um, I really I love that presentation because yeah. there's so much good stuff in it. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. And I think a lot of us overlook so much of that when we're building e-commerce sites. It's just, we're so busy with the scripting and the getting everything ready. We don't we don't think from the user's perspective and put ourselves in their shoes. So that's... Yeah. You know, um, before I worked at Big Commerce, I did, I did e some e-commerce sites, you know? I'm a web developer. I know how to install WooCommerce and all that stuff. And, and it wasn't until I got there that I realized the difference between a web developer who can 
install e-commerce software and an e-commerce expert. And there were hundreds of people there who didn't have the first clue about mm -hmm. how to install some software or whatever, but were so much smarter than me when it came to big or to e-commerce. I was like, wow, this is mind blowing what there is so much more beyond the software. It's the people. It's, it's just, it was really impressive. That's awesome. And uh, I'm also going to just put real quick our usual plug for all of our um, our stuff here. So that's our next meetup is SEO data and strategy to move your website forward with Jean Perpelant. Uh, that's Thursday, November 19th. Um, and then there's our website and our YouTube if you want to subscribe for when the videos go live. And we have a Slack where you can join and uh, ask questions in our off times and, and just build a community around our group here. So. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone, for joining. I right. uh, appreciate your time. And uh, we'll see you guys again on our first Friday meetup, which is November 6th for our collaboration, just hanging out and socializing stuff. So that's in the meetup as well.